quite a lot of the discourse around Mario Kart Tour, which released on September 25th, has been fairly negative. Quite a few fans and internet personalities have expressed their distaste for the monetization model mostly, but I've also seen a few complaints about some of the mechanics, controls, and the lack of certain features. At one point, I can't remember who said it, but someone said that if you defend Mario Kart Tour, you're probably someone who defends everything Nintendo does? This was honestly hilarious to me, and the spark that got me to write this video. Maybe the people who are very much against mobile game monetization haven't realized that it might not be the game for them? Anyway, I want to address some of these common complaints and my personal thoughts on Mario Kart Tour in this video, so let's get right into it. But before that, I want to say real quick that I am sick, so if my voice sounds a bit weird, you know, that's uh, nothing I can really do about that, but you know, the show must go on, so let's get right down to business. First off, the big one. My Twitter timeline and YouTube subscriptions have been flooded with everyone and their mom talking about the supposedly poor monetization methods in the game. To understand how these claims are way overblown in my opinion, first we need to establish how the game is actually monetized. This is done through in-app purchases in the form of Ruby Packs and the Gold Pass. Ruby Packs supply the currency you need to roll on the gacha system, while the Gold Pass is a whole different beast. It's a monthly subscription that unlocks more in-game bonuses, carts, gliders, and characters. Now, I will agree that the Gold Pass is pretty questionable because of the fact that 200cc is locked behind it, while also being a subscription service. This would be far easier to swallow if the game only asks you to pay like $4.99 once and that's the end of it, but this subscription model makes an otherwise easily justifiable purchase more complicated than it should be. I don't think the concept of the Gold Pass is necessarily bad. In fact, a lot of other games do something similar, and it can be quite a good incentive to spend some money on the game. The further you progress into Mario Kart Tour, the more you stand to gain from purchasing the Gold Pass, as you keep accumulating bonuses. But quite honestly, I don't think Nintendo is going to keep the Gold Pass the way it is for long. I think changes will be made to it sooner rather than later, due to a lot of the backlash, as I think this is the only reasonable complaint people have put out but I guess only time will tell to see if Nintendo actually makes any changes. The Ruby Packs I really don't think there's anything wrong with at all. The prices don't seem too crazy compared to other gacha games. The only thing that can make this gacha kinda questionable is the fact that the gacha rates are so incredibly low. Or are they? The chance of getting a focus high-end character, cart, or glider is currently 1%, while an off-focus high-end character, cart, or glider is a mere 0.3%. This may seem like Nintendo is scheming to keep pulling money out of you until you get a good high end, but it really isn't that bad, as the percentages are all added on top of each other. That means that for a single high end, the pull rate might be 0.3%, but putting all the numbers together, the chance of pulling any high end is a whopping 6% total. That is, from what I can tell, kind of in the middle of the spectrum as far as gacha game rates go, for example, Fire Emblem Heroes starts you out with a 6% chance as well of getting any 5-star, which is the high-end equivalent of that game, while Dragalia Lost and Fate Grand Order start you out with 4%. On the other hand, the City of Final Fantasy Opera Omnia gives you a 10% chance of getting a 5-star. That is not even mentioning the fact that the gacha in Mario Kart Tour really doesn't affect how well you do in the game that much, but I'll get into that in a second. Regardless, I think you're starting to get the picture that these rates and practices aren't very uncommon when it comes to gacha games. It's part of the deal when you play them. I personally enjoy these systems, as the rush of getting just that 5-star or high-end you want is unparalleled, and for some that might be the danger of it all. Or it could be seen as a cheap business tactic to get people to buy microtransactions. To those people, I'd say that I get where they're coming from, but that means the free-to-play mobile market isn't for them. All of these games are easily playable and very much enjoyable without spending money, but if you don't like this kind of stuff in games and would like to see it go sooner rather than later, speak with your wallet and your time. Don't spend money on Mario Kart Tour and don't play it, as well as any other gacha game for that matter. The best way you can make Nintendo or other mobile game companies pay attention is by not participating in these systems and these games. Find other mobile games that might have you pay a small fee up front, but provide an experience without microtransactions. Of course, it's okay to criticize these systems, but it seems kind of thoughtless to shout out this gacha system is bad while then not comparing it to other games with gacha systems. 
point out flaws you see within these systems as they compare to each other, and if the gacha system brings the gameplay down significantly. That's all fair to criticize in my book, but if you're not going about it from that angle, then it doesn't make much sense to me. That's like going to a casino and complaining that you don't get enough money from a certain slot machine, or the slot machines in general. You know what you're getting yourself into beforehand, and if you don't like the way that slot machine works or all of them as a collective, move to a different one, or don't engage with or spend money on them at all. Earlier, I also mentioned that the gacha doesn't affect your in-game performance that much, and knowing that, to me the complaints then lose a lot more merit. You see, every track has different score multipliers, higher item counts, and combo score multiplier times for different carts, characters, and gliders respectively. Now you'd think that a higher rarity means better bonuses, and while the high ends do have better base points than lower rarities, they are nowhere near being the best choice for every race. For example, Toad, who is a super character, often has the highest item count on Toad Circuit, while a super mushroom themed cart has the highest point multiplier. On a lot of races, plenty of high ends are even the worst choices, so the game makes high ends have a slight edge over other rarities, but they are not the end all be all. Every driver, cart, and glider are viable, and certain ones only make getting high scores a bit easier, while within races, skill and a slight bit of luck still reign supreme, and decide the majority of your score after a race. As a result, Mario Kart Tour doesn't do much to incentivize the player to spend money, it only offers mild conveniences. If you're not good at the game, then spending money on ruby packs or the gold pass will not alleviate that problem. Another complaint I've heard is that the controls are bad, and to this I mostly agree. They take quite a bit of getting used to. The only thing that makes this sort of tolerable, with the future of multiplayer in mind, is that everybody will be handling the same controls, and mastering them will be a challenge to overcome to get out on top. I have already noticed myself getting better at the controls, and the game has gotten quite a bit more fun for me as a result. Lastly, the lack of features within the game has been a point of contention for people, and so I want to address them real quick. I mentioned multiplayer before, and while it's a bummer that it isn't around yet, I think Nintendo has more plans for it than just online racing and that's it. Maybe tying another reward mechanic to it, or something else. So I'm suspecting that's why it's absent right now. Another one of the features missing that I've seen people talking about is time trials, to which I say, have you even played this game? This is not an addition to the game that needs to happen as soon as humanly possible. There's barely any optimization of race times possible in this game, as there are, to my knowledge, no differences in stats between drivers, carts, and gliders, and on top of that, there are not a lot of branching paths and shortcuts to discover, so I don't know why anyone would want this so badly. Hell, the game doesn't even record your times as it is now, so it seems like Nintendo agrees with me here. One thing I do think this game needs is more things to do. More ways to earn rubies and just more daily content than just challenges. Once you clear all the cups currently available to you, that's kind of that until the next ones open up, and I think there are more things Nintendo could do to bring some variety to the game. Like more special missions, different courses altogether, and not gating unlockable cups behind waiting for them to open up. I want to play more now, not later. All in all, while I may have sounded like I was defending Mario Kart Tour in every way, I really don't think it's anything too special. It sure is Mario Kart, and while it's a fun little game to play in short bursts, it's no replacement for the main series games, obviously. This is something that I don't think its detractors realize. I don't think the monetization is as horrible as people made it out to be, and the missing features I've seen people talking about, while not completely irrelevant, are not what Nintendo needs to focus on in my opinion. I hope this video has been able to shed some light on a more nuanced take on the subject. The game does have flaws, absolutely, but I personally don't think they are nearly as awful as people have made them out to be. And with that said, I bring the discussion to you guys. What do you all think about Mario Kart Tour and the common complaints levied against it? Let me know in the comments, and while you're at it, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, and turn on notifications for this channel to be notified whenever a new video of mine goes live. I'm working on some great ones right now that I'm truly excited to show you, and hopefully the voiceover for those won't be my sick voice. Also become a member of my Discord and follow me on Twitter. The links for those are in the description and pinned comment. Anyway, with that all said guys, thanks again for watching, and stay tuned to this channel for more on Mario Kart Tour, maybe, and other things Nintendo as well. Oh bye bye Oh bye 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 bye
Okay, so side note, I've had to re-record this script like 20 times because I kept cuffing or my voice kept cracking or something very annoying and bad. So, yeah, God kill me. <laughs>